Good morning. Today I'm finishing up some old buckskins. Uh, this is brain tanned buckskin. If you don't know what that is, I'll tell you about it in presently. And I'm going to give you some uh, pro tips for softening buckskin by hand. I've done this a lot. I used to do it for a living, you know, just to scrape up enough money to survive so I could live in the woods and do what I wanted. And I wrote this book in a long time ago, in the 90s sometime. And then what was reprinted is this book with mod slight modifications, and now it's been out of print for a long time. And the target date to get it reprinted is this fall, but it was also last fall, so we'll see. But we're going to make some revisions to it and uh, get it back out there in print and digital form. So, brain tan buckskin is deer skin. Well, it doesn't have to be deer skin, but usually deer skin where the grain layer is scraped off. Now the grain is that shiny layer that you see on a lot of leather, like on your boots or a belt or something like that. So that shiny layer is shaved off, so it's real fuzzy and soft like this. And then the skin is soaked in a brain solution, uh, animal brains. You can also use eggs, oils, uh, any spinal fluid. Those all have kind of the same things in them. Egg yolks, not egg whites. After it's soaked in that thoroughly, this is a, this is a short version. Don't try this at home without more information. Um, you have to hand soften it. The softening process is a lot of work. And basically what you're doing is, let's let's go to the chalkboard real quick. Okay, so let's say we have a hide. This is the thickness of the hide. And the interior of the hide is wet because we have soaked it in this solution of brains or egg yolks or whatever we're using. Working a hide like this that's full of water and really, really wet is pointless. You won't get anything done at all. Because the way this works is that as the moisture leaves the hide, the hide fiber structure, which is kind of just this felty crisscross of like tangled up fibers is a good way to think of it. That you want to pull that apart as the hide dries. And the, the point is to get these fibers fluffed up as the hide dries so that the hide is nice and soft because brain tan buckskin can be very, very soft. You can't pull these fibers apart and break them free from each other because there's just too much water. Let's say the hide begins to dry from the outside. Okay, now it's worth working the hide because these fibers that are in this area can start to be broken apart. What they're gonna wanna do is glue down to each other and stick together. So if you just take that hide and throw it out and dry it, it's gonna be a lot like rawhide. So our job today is to keep these fibers broken up as they dry so that they don't stick together. And as this goes through, you know, it gets a little more dry, then you can work it some more. So a main point I wanna drive home today is that continuous working of the hide is not necessary. A good way to think of it is letting small amounts of moisture leave the hide, you know, a little bit drier, break it up as much as you can, and then set it aside and let that happen again. Now, if it's super, super hot and dry and windy, you may have to work it constantly. So, you know, that's a possibility, but typically you don't. And you can waste a lot of energy by overworking the hide. However, if we leave it, you know, say for this long without breaking those fibers up, we probably won't be able to recover from that without re-wetting the hide. Okay, so it's like these incremental, let some water leave, fluff up the fibers, let some water leave, fluff up the fibers. That's what we're doing. It's February, but it's been in the 70s. And this hide here is starting to get ahead of me a little bit. I have hides in different stages here, so we'll be kind of jumping around. The first thing to dry is the edges, and they have a tendency to get crispy real easy. These hides in particular are very easy to soften, so this isn't necessarily the best demonstration. Um, they sat around for years and years just dried and uh, I'm just getting around to softening them and when hides are dried for a long time they react with water much differently they don't hold on to as much water they don't absorb as much water and they're just easier to soften so you know I want to get these edges worked out and softened before they get crispy and flat so this is a great technique right here is uh, pulling off the edge 
and then pulling it lengthwise and I'll usually do that two or three times. Another good strategy for this actually is running the edges over this cable. We're using this cable a lot. I'll, I'll explain it more presently. It really works the edge really well and it stretches it completely lengthwise, you know, as much as it's going to stretch lengthwise. And then when you go back to hand softening, you can pull these edges out in the other direction. The other reason we cable is to break up this. So as the hide dries, it'll tend to form kind of a crust and these fibers will stick together. And by buffing it, we get this kind of fluffy cottony feel and that'll kind of break up this crust and allow the hide underneath to stretch more. And it also just, you know, it bends the hide sharply and works the fibers open really well. It also heats the hide a little bit, which helps dry it. Okay, I just wanted to show my cable setup. I think this is a 3 16 inch cable. It could be quarter, but I think it's 3 16 So this one is crimped here, but uh, you don't need to do that. You can get the parts at a hardware store to put in what's called, a, I think it's called a nipple. Is that right? It's like a little U-shaped piece of metal that fits inside here. And then there's a clamp with uh, bolts that goes right there. So you can get all this stuff at, the, at most hardware stores and you can buy this stuff by the foot. And I have it affixed here to the side of the building with a stout hook. And then up here, I have a turnbuckle. So that allows me to get this nice and tight. In fact, I could even tighten it a little bit more. If the cable is loose and it bends way out into a sharp, you know, curve when you pull on it, it's really inconvenient. It's much harder to use. It's more work. It doesn't do as much work. It doesn't cover as much of the hide surface. So if possible, you really want to stretch this out, which can be hard if you're just kind of like tying it to a tree or something. So if possible, maybe tie it to the base of a tree and then angle it up like this is and tie the top to a branch. So having it angled is also useful because of just kind of the way that you, you know, your body mechanics are and pulling back on it like this, 12, 15 degrees, something like that. Not, not that it really matters. Just put a little angle on it if you're in a situation where you can do that. And they're pretty weather resistant. Like over a long period of time, they'll eventually start to rust, which is bad, you know, but you can replace it. But I just leave one set up permanently all the time. I did that all around the edges, so now all the edges are basically stretched as far as they can be edgewise. Find like a clean towel or tarp or something. This is just an old sheet. I always keep old sheets around for working on stuff like this. And that way you can, you know, pop your shoes off, sit on here, step on the hide, which is very convenient because now I can use both hands to pull the edge. And then I'm just going to rotate a little bit. Pull this edge all the way out, pull it back lengthwise, do that a couple times, and move on. Again, you know, if I do it five times, it's really not going to do anything more than if I do it two times. Maybe sometimes, you know, like especially if it gets away from you a little bit and gets a little crunchy, you may have to really work it hard to get it back. But typically, you're going to be trying to find that line where you're not overworking too much and you know you're not obviously underworking it if you want it to be really really soft the other thing about edges is for some reason you always lose a little bit of the edge that becomes crusty and if the hide's thick like at the neck hair we'll lose a little bit more like sometimes a half inch even and if it's way down on a thin part, you hardly lose anything. I've never figured out why that is, but it is. And if it's possible to avoid that by just extreme working, it's not worth it. Because <laughs> you're not losing much. And figuring that, that problem out of, you know, how much to work it, when to work it, when not to work it, is one of the things that could save you the most energy. Because this is, even an easy hide like these are, there's still a lot of work. One of the reasons I mostly do bark tanning now is I beat my body up so hard doing this for money before that uh, I'm kind of over it. <laughs> and I will soften bark tans, but they're, they're pretty easy to soften relative to buckskin. But again, um, if you can get your hides prepared and store them for at least a, a year, 
you know, at least six months, but preferably a year. You know, they're going to take brains way better. They're going to soften way better. They're going to soften much faster. And I actually use that as a strategy, except these were around for like many, many years. Okay, so what I didn't do is I didn't cable all of this. And I don't know if you'll be able to see the difference, but the parts that I ran over the cable are softer. And then some of these thicker, wetter areas are starting to get kind of crusty. So again, kind of like the fibers are sticking together, they form this crust, and it just kind of holds the hide back from like fluffing up. The way I like to break that up is using the cable. So we're gonna go back and cable that now across the whole middle of the hide. We got the edges pretty good. So this is really tearing up that flaw, that uh, stuff on the back, the membrane surface, the flesh side, and it's bending the hide very, very sharply, and it's stretching it. So I'm doing three things at once with this motion. It's a lot of work to pull this hide over the cable, but it gets you a lot of benefit and it gets it really, really fast. So now I'm basically doing the same thing, but in a different direction. I'm going kind of like catty corner, uh, corner to corner. Flip it now and do the other corner to corner. So watch how much this stretches, see that? Because I completely stretched it out diagonally in the other direction. Okay, so this is the other way we can use the cable. Lean back, put one foot back, because if you lose grip on that hide or the cable breaks, you're going to be hurting because you're leaning back, you know, really hard with all your weight. So just keep a foot a little bit back so you have a chance <laughs> to not crash and burn completely. So again, I went like, you know, side to side, then I went neck to tail, and now I'm going to go diagonal. And then diagonal the other way, and we'll go back to hand softening. So here's another way we can stretch the hide out really well that's a cool trick. Grab the edges like this, lean over, and then sp I'm gonna spread my knees apart. Watch. It's all one motion. It's kind of like get a good handhold, a sudden down pull, and pulling your knees apart at the same time. I can't do it while I'm talking. <laughs> this is a really good energy saving trick. You know, think of doing that versus standing and just pulling the height as hard as you can with two hands. I'm stretching like, you know, almost a third of that height at a time with just that one motion. One last thing before I set this height aside and grab something that might be getting too dry too fast. Oh, actually that's in the sun, I'm gonna go grab it. Okay, so this hide needs work right now. A bunch of moisture has left it, it's drying really quickly. It was just in the sun, it had just gotten in the sun. I need to work it, but I wanna finish this hide real quick. So what I'm gonna do is fold this up, edges in, and just roll it up like that. If in some situations, if it's really hot or if you need to leave it for a while, you just stick this in a plastic bag or something like that, or even wrap it in a cloth. So we'll get back to that one in a minute. Um, another thing is on the grain side, so this is the hair side, you'll get that same crusting effect. As water is leaving the hide, it forms this kind of crust where the fibers on the surface glue down together. And it's really helpful to break that up. And for that, I like pumice. I don't like to cable this side because this is kind of your good side that you know, you're gonna see all the time. And if you get the right piece of pumice rock, it'll cut fast, but it won't damage the hide. If you get too coarse of a pumice, and don't use that red lava rock that some people call pumice. This is true pumice. It's like gray glass. It's basically like molten volcanic glass that's had a bunch of bubbles blown into it. So depending on how big the bubbles are, um, you'll get harder pumice or softer pumice. And you want one that'll cut fast, but if it leaves little cut lines, they'll look, you know, you'll see like a little cut line like that in the hide. Um, don't use it. And I do use this on the flesh side, but not very often. Okay, so again with the lap, you know, it's just really convenient to have this set up 
So I can kind of stretch this out and just go over and make sure there's no crust. And you can kind of feel around like it feels maybe a little crusty there. But at some point, that crust will stop forming, like the hide will be dry enough that you won't get that anymore. But it can really help to keep that broken up. Yeah, pumice, great tool. Used very much traditionally in tanning all over the world, including right in this area, the Lake Pomo, um, over just like a county over from me. Used to pick this stuff up off the uh, beaches because it floats, like this will float in water, and use it for uh, just this working buckskin. But it's used in tanning and parchment making worldwide, wherever it occurs, because it works great. Okay, so this hide is in great shape. Uh, you know, I've gone over the edges. It don't, really doesn't need any more work right this minute. And I can just throw this aside, let it dry for maybe 10 minutes or so, and then get back on it, however long it takes me to get through this other hide. However, if I were to throw this aside now, with all the moisture in it, this neck is really wet. I mean, it feels cold and wet. You know, most of the hide still has moisture in it. It's going to stiffen up and it's not going to come back the way we want it, which is just like this super buttery, buttery soft feel. Before I set it aside, I'm gonna shake it out to kind of even the shape out, right? right? Like I don't wanna stretch it all lengthwise like this and then set it aside to dry because it will start to take a set as it dries in whatever shape it's in. So I'm just gonna kind of gently stretch and shake it around till it's a more natural shape. And get on this one. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do here is just do a quick overall stretch because it's so easy and it'll get it stretched back out. And then I wanna to attend to these edges. I wanna check them, see how they're doing, whether they need the cable or not. Because if they don't need the cable, I don't wanna do it. It's a lot of work. And these are feeling really good. So again, you know, these hides are extremely easy to soften. They're very, very, very well brained. I think a lot of them were already brained before they were stored and then I just ran them through again. They could have been brained many times over. I have no idea what the history of these hides are. They're just in a big pile. Yeah, this is just doing really, really good. Um, so I'm gonna do kind of just a quick stretch over. Again, you can do this lap stretching thing diagonally, um, but it still feels damp. Like when it still has that cool feeling, that means there's still water in it. And if you go around and find like a dry area, like this one right here, it just feels different. It feels warm. So that is a really important uh, tool when you're working hides is just keep feeling for that. The other thing you'll see is on areas that are finished, they'll, especially the thick areas, they'll bounce back when you pull them. So this, when I pull it, it just stays there. And this bounces back. Can you see that? It kind of has a little bit of bounce to it. If I was gonna do anything else, it would just be a quick cabling. I've already gone over this side and got all the crust off with the pumice. It's already been done enough on this side that this is all fluffy and it's dry enough that that crust on either side is not forming anymore. So this is kind of the home stretch for this hide. But some hides will require a lot of extra work. You know, if it's a difficult to soften hide, if it's not super well brained, you know, it may require a whole lot of work at this stage. So let's flip this on the cable just, just one time around just to really fluff it up. Just hit some of the thicker areas a couple extra times. Take a few seconds to pull it back into a little bit more natural shape. Shake it out a couple times and let's move on. This hide was actually fully tanned in, um, I think it was oak galls, judging from the color, I'm pretty sure it was oak galls. And it's very different, like it really doesn't wanna stretch and it won't. Like I can't turn that into this because the tannins in the oak galls have locked the fibers together is called uh, cross-linking. That's how tanning actually works. Bark tanning and most commercial tans, chrome tan, formaldehyde tans. 
So this one still has some moisture and it's dried quite a bit. So I'm just gonna cable it real quick. Again, cabling the flush side only. And since this is already fully tanned, like it doesn't just, it just doesn't need that much work. I'm gonna dry it out and it'll be fine. I do wanna get back on this hide pretty quick because it's drying fast now, it's in the sun. Um, so I can't leave that for too long, but we're gonna check out this other hide, which really hasn't even got started yet. So this one's more in the, the beginning phase. It's still got a lot of water in it. It needs to be worked a lot and soon. So this has just come out. It's been sitting around, so there's a pretty good crusty surface on this side and this side both already. I wanna break those up, break this one up on the cable, break the other one up with the pumice, and the edges need attention immediately. They're already pretty dry. They're drying really fast because now the sun's out and it's getting warm and it's slightly breezy. And I can feel like this whole area is just getting papery and stiff. There's still hope to break it up, um, but the first thing I wanna do is run it on the cable and especially run these edges uh, first. So this is gonna break up that crust, it's gonna stretch the edges as much as it can lengthwise, and I'm sharply bending the fibers in the hide, which is gonna help break them apart. And I'll know when I get to where I started because the edge, the surface will be broken up and fluffy instead of crusty and flat. Hard work. If you're maybe not so young and you wanna learn tanning, Think about learning vegetable tanning, you know, tanning with bark and stuff. It's quite a bit less work. So while I'm here, I'm just gonna stretch over the hide once before we go work the edges. But I'm not gonna cable the center of the hide yet because those edges need attention immediately. But just to kind of get this hide loosened up and broken a little side to side and now neck to tail, and we'll get on with the edges. It's a pretty big, thick skin which sounds cool, but it's not always a good thing. If you're making clothes, uh, doe skins are actually pretty nice because they're often a little thinner. Now we're back to this game. And since this hide's kind of getting away from us with the edges a little bit, I might do that a little bit more than I would on some hides. You know, like go over it three or four times at each spot. For instance, this little corner right here is lost. Uh, which is fine, I don't even want that corner. I should probably go around this hide and trim it up a little bit. Um, there's quite a few proponents out there of softening the hides and frames. I've never really taken to it. I mean, I used to do it, that's how I started, uh, doing dry scrape brain tan and softening in a frame. And I have softened wet scrapes in a frame, but I just, don't really like it too much and I don't like dealing with tying the hides in the frame, having the frame around all this rope and but in the long run it may be easier in terms of like total effort, calories expended. So this part of the neck is really damp still. I'm not gonna mess with that too much. This corner is lost. It's already too dry. I'm just gonna cut that off. a little bit of stuff here. It's just a little tag end anyway. I don't want that. Okay, since this hide needs so much attention like ASAP, I'm just going to put that aside. I'm going to put these two guys away. This one especially. The other one I might leave out. I gotta check it. It might be close enough to leave it out and just finish it up. But this one I want to get those edges folded into the middle. And I'm just going to Tuck it up like that and set it aside. This one's almost finished, you know, like watch when I pull it, how it bounces back. See, it's got a little spring to it. Not all of it, there's areas that aren't done yet. But I can rip those on the cable here and then just throw it back here and let it dry some more. Here's the rump, the thick part of the rump, which is still pretty wet. Pull that in a couple directions. And what will eventually allow you to work a whole bunch of hides at once is understanding when you can afford to not work them, when you need to work them, when to set them aside so you can catch up with other things. I mean, I'll rarely soften one skin at a time because it just feels like a waste of time. 
I'm just going to be sitting around waiting for it to dry, so I might as well be working another hide. So I'll typically do at least two hides at a time, especially if they're really well prepared and they're going to soften easy. And you want to overwork them a little because it's going to make them softer and nicer. I feel like this little area of the neck could use a little more fluffing. So we're just going to cable that really hard. <laughs> And yeah, as long as I don't forget about this and I hit it maybe three more times before just a final fluffing on the cable, it should be good. So back to this one, I haven't got around all the edge yet. But when I do, I'll see you on the other end. Okay, just for good measure, I'm gonna stretch this out a little more, just in general, get it really opened out. So I have this kind of crust forming here, which I could start to sand off. But if the area is really wet, it's kind of pointless. So I think it's more important that I get this cabled right now. So let's go cable the middle of this hide and stretch it on the cable some more. So when I do this, especially the first time, I really want to make sure I cover every surface of the hide to break up that crusty stuff. Kill the crust. Boy, this is a beefy hide. Fortunately, they get lighter as they get drier. So, so if I th see anything in particular that looks crusty, I'm gonna hit it with the cable, but sometimes it's because it's too wet and it's not gonna fluff up yet. But this area I just didn't get yet. We've done the edges once, but I'm gonna do the edges again because they're drying very fast. They're already too dry. Make sure that they turn out nice and soft. You see this kind of brown stuff here? That's kind of dried up and crusty, you just get rid of that. But when I do that, I can look here in the center of the hide. I hope you can I hope you can see this, but there's kind of a line, like a wet brown line in there with surrounded by two layers of fluffy white. Or I really need to make some fun leather clothes for myself. Jacket is first on the list or maybe a buckskin hoodie. I've always wanted to make a black buckskin hoodie. I've got the buckskin, so I got piles of them finished. And now we're gonna attend to the crust on this side. I have no idea what these stains are. Those could be rust stains or who knows. I'm pretty sure this hide was peed on by a pack rat. Good chance because this is so stained up that I'll just end up dyeing this one completely black. Okay, so right there when I was using this, I saw some lines form and they might just be little scrape lines, but I wanna make sure they're not cut lines. So if I can stretch them back out and I can't see them, we're good. But truly, sometimes you'll just get one little hard line in the pumice that doesn't have as many air bubbles in it and that's glass. I mean, it's just a sharp piece of glass. That's why this works at all. The only reason we're not, you know, damaging the hide in a way we don't want to is because the little pieces of glass are so fine that they can't cut deep lines in the hide. So you really want to keep an eye on that while you're pumicing. And I can kind of feel around and look for areas like this that don't look like they're fluffy enough yet. But since this hide is still pretty damp, uh, that crust can form again as the hide is drying out in the, the wetter parts. And once this is done, we'll have liberated both sides of the hide from that crust and it'll allow the hide underneath to fluff and stretch easier. If you get areas of the hide that maybe weren't scraped quite as well, there's like a little subsurface grain, you can spend some more time on those and kind of sand through some of it. For this one, I think the next thing I wanna do is go cable the edges again cable the center of the hide really well, like more than I want to, and just get on stretching this thing a lot because it's very, very thick and it's kind of like got ahead of me a little bit early on. And there's areas that could use a lot more fluffing up that could end up a little bit, a little bit flatter than I want them if I don't attend to them well. So since this is drying so fast, I just want to finish it off. This may be the last cabling even. <clears throat> we'll see. Yeah, all that part's done. It's just going to be maybe these rumps are a little damp. Yeah, they're still damp. I can feel it. They're wet. And when I stretch them, they stay stretched. 
they don't bounce back versus like these other areas which rebound when you stretch them. One of the reasons that people like frame softening is because the hides turn out flat, but that's artificial, you know. It's not really like I'm stretching the hide out of shape. I'm stretching it more into its natural shape, which is wavy. It's not flat. Animals aren't flat. But it does make it a little bit harder to work with when you're working with large pieces. Once you cut the thing into smaller pieces for patterns and stuff, it's not really a big deal. Before we get back to the thick hide, let's check this hide. Yeah, I want to cable this and then put it back in the sun. Hide management. If you need to uh, stop for the day and the hide still has quite a bit of moisture in it, you know, if it's mostly dry and really close to dry, you probably don't want to stop. But if it's, you know, got quite a bit of moisture, you can just roll it up like that, stick it in a plastic bag overnight and finish it the next day. And some of the moisture will redistribute a little bit through the hide, which can be a good thing. Okay, we got the edges. Cable the middle. It's the skill cult workout. Another tip for this is look how red my knuckles are. That's from going like this and pulling. So you want to be careful of that, like not to do it to too much of an extreme or you're, they'll actually get blisters and they'll break open. Another way to do it is to put your finger in here and then wrap like that. And that's really not going to mess up your knuckles at all. It's harder, it takes more time to do that than just grabbing a handful. But if you start to get raw on your knuckles, you could switch to doing that. Put some band-aids over your blisters so you don't bleed on the hide too much. Not kidding, by the way. That's just reality. I told you, it's a lot of work. So I'm just hitting these, these thick rumps a little extra. Let's check the neck. Do the same thing at the neck. Just a little extra cabling in different directions. I go over the edges one time. I'm kind of just checking them more because a lot of them are finished. Like that part's pretty much finished. But anything that's not quite finished, I'll just give it a little stretch now before I set this aside. So, you know, if you're doing other things that are clean, you know, you're not getting your hands dirty or your feet dirty that you're going to still be able to work on your hides. You could just soften one hide at a time and do other things in between, some kind of crafting or whatever people do. Check your Instagram to see if anybody loves you. Just before I get this big hide, just one more hit on the cable with this little hide because like the parts that aren't dry are literally sitting in the sun drying extremely fast. And it's like really close to done. There's a little bit of wet edge over here near the rump. Probably if I set this aside, let it dry, and then just ran it over the cable, it would be fine. But a little overworking is going to give you a softer, fluffier hide. So that's all that took at this point. I'm just going to stretch it once here before I take it to the cable. I need a quick break because this is just hard work and I'm no spring chicken. So I'm going to fold this up, edges in. I'll just do this. And you want to wear some kind of shoes that you can just pop on and off all the time or you'll, you know, to get back on and off your clean sheet surface. So even, you know, five minutes later here, this is so close to finished. I can barely feel any dampness in there. And even the areas that I can feel a little dampness, there's still a little bit of rebound. So this is good. Like I can just leave this to dry. But once it's completely dry for real, I'll just buff it on the cable one last time to get it nice and fluffy. And this one's kind of at the stage that one was about two cablings ago. It's very close. It's drying very fast. It's going very well. It'll just require a little bit of minimal working on the cable and we'll be done with that one. This one's already dry or if it's not, doesn't really matter. Just want to take a quick rest. Uh, check my Instagram to see if anyone loves me. It's like maybe a couple people here. <laughs> and, uh, this hide got just a little bit away from me. It's fine because it's really, you know, with a hide that's not softening easily, this, you know, that 15 minutes or whatever it was, was too much of the, having this hide in the sun. But even though it's mostly dry, it's still crusted up a little bit on this grain side. So 
you just want to be feeling for that like you'll you'll just feel it and it instead of like fluffy you'll just hit a spot like this that's kind of just feels a little yeah flat and crusty instead of fluffy that's good a little bit of cabling and throw it back in the sun so I was gonna say uh, it's time to beat this hide up on the cable a little but I think it's beating me up on the cable <laughs> this might be a more accurate way to look at it this thing is thick it's still really wet, it's tough, and I'm thinking I would rather put this in the fridge and finish it tomorrow. I'd really like to get it done, but I have a lot of other things I should do today. So with this hide, you know, there's more areas of the hide that are wet than not. There's just a very few areas, like these soft edges that are done. And the rest of the moisture in the hide will kind of migrate around a little bit and even out. So if you want to rationalize your way into putting the hide away for a night, you could just use that. And I'll stick this in a plastic bag. Pizza? That's not pizza. And this doesn't have to go in the refrigerator. It's just less likely to get stinky. And this hide's very close to done. Probably 15 minutes, this will be finished. So this hide is now completely dry. And I'm just gonna re-fluff everything now that it's completely dry. And then, these hides will be ready to smoke, but that's another story. And then after smoking, I will probably dye a couple of these black. It's all soft, it feels warm. When we stretch it, it bounces back, even in these thick rumps. Finito. The hard thing to learn, but one of the most useful things is management. How much do you need to work the hide when, when you can afford to put it away, when you can't afford to put it away, and all that stuff. The reason I'll put this hide in the fridge is because if I don't do it tomorrow, because I have a lot of other stuff to do and that's time sensitive, that could stay in there through the weekend, you know, three days, four days, and it'll still be fine. I can finish it up whenever I have time. So this hide is almost finished. Like every 10 minutes, I just need to come back and work these uh, damp, thick rumps a little bit, necks a little bit damp, but it's pretty much in the home stretch here. So for people who are doing a lot of tanning, like a lot of brain tanning, a good strategy that I've used a lot, say you wanna soften like four to six hides in a day, is to actually start them the day before, get them to the point where the hide is more um, damp than dry. Um, it could even be that it's like some of the edges are already finished, but you don't have to take it that far. And then kind of get everything going, right? Get everything started and then just roll them all up and stick them in the fridge and take the rest of the day off and then finish them all the next day. So you're going to save yourself quite a bit of work that next day and have kind of a head start on everything that's already kind of opened up and ready to go. So that's actually a really good strategy that I've used a lot, um, you know, when tanning large quantities of hides. Because again, I typically prefer to soften, you know, at least two hides at a time, preferably more like three to four, depending on how easy they're going to be to soften, how much energy I have and, and other things. But it's nice to just do it all and get it over in a day. Okay, I hope this uh, video was helpful. For some people out there who are brain tanning and uh, catch you later.